You are listening to Sean Kelly Interviews, a presentation of Sean Kelly on Movies at www.skonmovies.com. Now, here is your host, Sean Kelly. Hello, and welcome to a very special episode of Sean Kelly Interviews in celebration of World Autism Day. So, um... You may or may not know this, but I am on the autistic spectrum, and I have Asperger's Syndrome. And um, uh, a couple years ago at the Hot Docs Film Festival, I interviewed uh, filmmakers Nathan Drillet and Jeff Petrie, who made a documentary called Wizard Mode about um, autistic pinball player Robert Gagno, and I interviewed all three of them at hot docs and uh it's a good interview and i will play it for you and i'll talk a bit more at the end enjoy okay so um how did this film come together is that a question for me and for everyone um well we first we first met robert um because we had mutual friends that played pinball with him and he's like a pinball legend in vancouver his high scores are on most of the machines um, he wins most of the tournaments, and so we kind of found out that there was this, this amazing pinball player, and then they also told us that he was on the autism spectrum, which we thought was interesting, so we reached out to his family, uh, went over to their house, um, immediately realized that Maurizio and Kathy were like these really loving, incredible people, and that Robert was a really um, incredible guy too. Played a bunch of pinball together in the garage, the rest is history. Mm-hmm. So, this is, this is for Robert, I'm... How long have you been playing pinball competitively? I've been playing pinball competitively for like 20 years. Wait, is that true? Competitively? No, well, competitively. Um, <laughs> just, hang on, let me check again. Um, eight years. Okay. Yeah, eight years. And your first tournament was in Toronto, right? Yeah. The Canadian Pinball Championships in 2008, I believe. Yeah. Where my dad actually was mainly going for a business trip. And he just discovered it was a Canadian Pinball Championships. So that's where I first learned about pinball tournaments. And I never ever even thought they existed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So um, could you describe what, it, what exactly happens when you achieve Wizard Mode? Well, Wizard Mode, they call like the, like the bonus mode of the game. Mm-hmm. Which, which is achieved after you lock or accomplish all tasks in one game. Mm-hmm. And basically, to me, Wizard Mode is like all modes into one with like super scoring. And usually the machine gets all crazy with flashing lights and like different sounds. And yeah. Like it does, it does like kind of like a crazy. Mode. And sometimes it does, and some games do a really crazy light show. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like seeing a spectacular fireworks display. Uh, so, um, for um, everyone, um, how do you believe the uh, film addresses the challenges faced by someone on the autistic spectrum? Hmm. Well, um, we tried to we tried to make as honest a portrait of Robert's experience as was possible. And that was done through just hanging out with Robert a lot and letting Robert sort of guide what that experience meant um, and how the film was essentially made. I mean, in the beginning, Nathan and I, when we first met Robert, we were sort of even afraid to say the word autism around him. We didn't know how he would react, how he would, you know, <laughs> if he even knew, you know. Uh, and then we took a big, long train trip together to Chicago. to Chicago, to the Stern Factory, and that was sort of like a real bonding experience because we were in this train for like 50 hours together. Um, we were given the opportunity to be sort of really candid with each other, and as soon as we said the word, um, everything opened up for the film. And yeah, the process, the process just meant a lot of hanging out. Yeah, and I think one of our things that Robert said to us like pretty early on either on that train ride or shortly after that train ride 
was that his hope was that people would, when people would meet him, that they would like meet him as Robert first, as a, as opposed to like meeting him and immediately just seeing the label of autism. So that was like quite inspiring to us. So that was definitely like a, a goal for the film mm-hmm. to help people kind of uh, maybe uh, be a bit more, uh, a bit less likely to label people yeah, immediately. Yeah, like we hope that the audience is taken on a similar journey that we were taken on um, in that at first you encounter Robert as a label he's a pinball wizard he's the best pinball player in the world he has autism all these things and then by the end of it you by the end of the film you've spent some time with Robert and his family and you've come to realize him as a unique human being uh, first and foremost and that's really important to the thesis of the film I think the whole film is very celebratory and and uh, Hopefully, a positive portrayal of someone on the spectrum. Well, just, so here's a bit of a follow-up question. I was looking on the schedule on, and on um, Saturday screening of the film will be in a sensory-friendly environment. So, yep. so um, how do you think um, people also on the autistic spectrum will relate to the film? And I should probably know that I'm one of them. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Um, well, that's interesting because I would almost want to ask you that question. <laughs> You've seen the film, right? Yeah. I mean, how do people? I think you know what? It's hard for me. Like, obviously, I'm not on the autism spectrum, right? So it's hard for me to generalize because I think that like it's a huge spectrum, right? So yeah. I, I I imagine that people that have maybe certain similarities with Robert, like that feel have had similar upbringings or feel certain ways that Robert feels, would hopefully relate to his character. But I don't know enough to be able to say like oh, like, I think all people on the spectrum are going to relate to this part of the movie. I imagine, like, I, you know, I think social cues are something that, obviously, we've been told, like, that it can be challenging for people that have autism. So maybe the part in the film where Robert's talking about social cues, I don't know, what did you relate to? Uh, okay, I worked out. Like, well, I related to the thing, like Robert said at one point, that girls find them odd. <laughs> okay, yeah, date the dating part, yeah. 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 I mean, and, I... I and, and just, the whole like getting stressed out I related with oh interesting yeah. okay yeah I mean I think that's the thing is I, I hope like we obviously hope that I mean first and foremost we made the movie I think the pinball community probably you know won't love what I'm about to say but first and foremost we made this movie for people that have loved ones friends family uh, on the autism spectrum or themselves or on the autism spectrum that's who I care mo- that's, I care most about what those people think of the movie right mm-hmm. so uh, that's why it's like an interesting question I hope that those people relate to the movie and I hope that they uh, are inspired by the movie like Jeff said we really wanted to make a positive portrayal um, something that people could find like hopefully inspiring yeah. oh yeah it is the um, spectrum so like there's yeah. different levels yeah. like I've, I've seen like three films at Hot Dogs so far about people on the autistic spectrum and they're all different so um, off the rails the yeah. person at Asperger's pretending to be a train conductor and wizard yeah. mode and then um, last night I saw Life Animated which is about an autistic man who was inspired by Disney movies to improve his life yeah, yeah. he communicates with his father through Disney, through Disney movies yeah <laughs> was yeah. that one good what did you think yeah. about it yeah I want to check out that one too yeah, I mean the spec- spectrum is the the most important word in that in that question, and it's it's some people I'm sure will not their experience will be uh, not relatable, but I, I yeah our hope is that we could sort of gently encourage or uh, sort of gently challenge a lot of the stereotypes and assumptions that people that aren't on the spectrum have about it. And, just make it more comfortable and so that people could approach yeah. people on the spectrum easier. What do you think, Robert? Mm. Like, do you have any ideas on, do you think people that are on the autism spectrum, what they'll relate to in wizard mode? Uh, yeah. They'll relate to success in the film. Do you and want them to be inspired by the success? And uh, to be able to see that they can be successful? Yes. Yeah. And that they can succeed in passions they are inspired with that they have. Yeah, that's cool. And that they need to, they, that their coaches are willing to work with students that are very passionate like this up there. Cool. Cool. Well, well here's, here's the way that I interpret autism because, well, I have it, kind of. Mm-hmm. Like, a lot of Asperger's, but mm-hmm. still autism. Like, I, I, because people, like, equate brains of computers. Mm-hmm. So, so pretty much... 
my interpretation is that my computer brain is running on an outdated operating system. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it takes a while to process things. Yeah. Well, that was one of the things in the film, like I, I, the factory scene, like where Robert goes to the factory and it's kind of surreal and they're making the pinball machines. We kind of always saw that as like a metaphor for like brains, right? And there's like this wiring and all this circuitry and like that was one of the scenes that in the film that we, we, we tried to have more of a surreal kind of take on like the mind, so to speak. Well, so, um, well, the, the film is has a very optimistic message of uh, Robert's life, and things are looking up for him by the end of the film. So, how has his life progressed? Robert, you want to take that one? How's your life progressed? Like, how is your life? Do you, what do you What are you happy about or optimistic about now versus in the past? Well, I'm happy to say I have. Other passions outside of pinball. Yeah. And a passion I'm really into, especially circus, gymnastics. Yeah, so, uh, did you see the documentary after circus is playing? Uh, circus? There's like a documentary about the circus. Uh. I don't know if anybody's any more screens of it. <laughs> uh, interesting. Well, I actually, one thing, the type of person I am, is I'm someone that loves going to the gym mm-hmm. and conditioning and trust me it's not easy surviving in the gym on a day I ha- on a day especially I have to condition <laughs> Robert's well, been on a big workout workout tip Look, is the, Robert are you more independent now or do you still rely on your parents? I say I'm more independent now yeah. because I like going to places by myself. Mm-hmm. I like going out with my friends my own age without my parents around. Mm-hmm. And I also train in a circus environment where they actually let me do flips that I really like. <laughs> There was some concern, Robert, maybe talk, because there was concern, some of those instructors were at first concerned because of him being on the spectrum, that he wouldn't be able to train for certain types of things. So that, Robert, kind of, you want to, you put that to rest a little bit, right? Yes, but a lot of coaches basically had an idea, is don't introduce me like to very basic tumbling tricks kind of thing, and then give me an option what basic tricks do you actually want to improve in now kind of thing and then they weren't going to like extend the, the, the training like they, they will for others mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because they felt it was a safety concern but now do they still, still feel that way? yes no no yeah. you changed their minds right? yes because yeah. because you've worked hard because I kind of, you know, it's one thing I would, it's like, say if you saw me doing a backflip and you were near me, and then I felt your hand come in and, like, lift you over aggressively, mm-hmm. I would almost assume that was probably not a good sign and that you were actually pretty close to crashing badly there. Oh, yeah, like they're spotting you. Yeah. Yes. Um, I mean, for us, one of the things that was kind of important was that the film wasn't just... Uh, wasn't just like in some sort of journalistic way going to just look at Robert's life and then leave completely uh, leave everything, the ecosystem completely untouched. I mean we became friends with Robert, we will continue to be friends with Robert well after the film is you know, aired everywhere and you know, part of Robert's independence uh, or, or his you know journey towards that is, is the film was involved in that like Robert would come out on the road with us alone without his parents and that was kind of the first time that that was happening yeah. mm-hmm. um, so yeah it was the film kind of helped and, and Robert helped us and it was like it just became a very organic process right? yes yeah, it's been cool hanging out with you on the road we've yes. done a lot of good trips now yes 
So, um, now what sort of um, distribution does the film have? I, I know it's on Vimeo because I saw the ad. For it. Yeah, it's um, it's uh, our Canadian distributor is Blue Ice Docs. Um, oh, so the, the people run the floor. Yeah. yeah. So Blue Ice Docs is our Canadian distributor. Um, they're looking to do a theatrical run later in the summer, hopefully. Mm-hmm. Um, we also, yeah, have a VOD deal with Vimeo On Demand. We're their first original, uh, their first original documentary, feature documentary. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of cool. Um, much like a lot of the other VOD platforms, they're starting to do original content. Mm-hmm. So they came on board as. Uh, uh, that's a lot of docs pure on Netflix. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah, so that's right now. That's what we have, and then we're negotiating further distribution. <laughs> Well, at Hot Docs, and so yeah, well, hopefully we'll have exciting updates in the future. So, uh, do you have like plans to share the film with the autism community? Or? Yeah, we partnered with Autism Ontario mm-hmm. and Autism Canada in for the Canadian uh, area, and then the states we have some connections down there as well. And so, our we've already done a couple screenings of the short film specifically. Uh, with like free screenings with, with various autism organizations, the Canucks, like the Vancouver Canucks hockey team, they have a, a an autism uh, network in Vancouver, and they screen the short film. So that's definitely something that we're interested in. We want to do more is have screenings that are specifically for that community that are hopefully like you know uh, free or very affordable. Yeah, and we have to thank uh, Autism Ontario for like reaching out to us and suggesting that Saturday screening be a sensory screening. Um, yeah, because this wasn't something that we actually even knew about, so it was it was awesome that they reached out to us and were like, "No, you, you just, do you want to do this?" Yeah, well, I'm, well, I'm, I'm aware of like sensory screenings. I haven't been to one because I'm not that far down the spectrum that it's concerned me. Yeah, 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 totally. Yeah, we didn't even know it existed, so we were really thankful um, for the people at Autism yeah, Ontario so to like say. From my knowledge, it's like the lights would be on and the sound would be down. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> which is cool. <laughs> Um, yeah, well, the thing I think Circus has also taught me is actually how to even condition for arm strength without weights, too, sometimes. <laughs> okay. How to also do that as well, kind of thing, but it's also taught me how to actually stay in a daily routine in life, too. Cool. Okay, so this will be the last question for Robert. Do you still dream of being the best pinball player in the world? Yes, I still do dream about being the best pinball player in the world. And whatever next tournament I'm at to win the next championships there. Mm-hmm. Except right now, eventually I've had plans after the filming is all over mm-hmm. to study com- Computer programming. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cool. I mean, pinball, yeah. this career that he has now takes up like 20 to 30 weekends a year. Yeah. So it's like quite a time commitment. So maybe if you get into BCIT and start doing computer programming, you're going to have to make some big decisions. But Good. by then you'll be like a pinball legend and you'll be able to pick and choose your tournaments, right? But then I also kind of feel that. But I kind of feel you. Only, if you think of wanting to go to school at BCIT, yeah, I figure you won't, you're going to have less time on your hands. Significantly less. Studying is a big responsibility, I think. Yep. But yeah. uh, did you go to? Did you study post secondary? I, I I actually I actually took computer programming at Humber College straight out of high school. Whoa. And then uh, after I graduated from that, I went. Uh, York University for film studies, so uh, oh, I took a lot of post secondary. Awesome, okay. way cool. more than me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I actually think, to be honest, like, we have a like, BCIT. You ever heard of it? Uh, I'm guessing that's um, British Columbia Institute of Technology. Yes, well, <laughs> you're right. You just pulled that out of the air. <laughs> nice, nice one. Now, basically, there were some students that at BCIT who wanted to do a project about me, even. Mm-hmm. It's a short film. And they actually did a film with me, a student project. And I was so excited to actually be part of an actual class project, mm-hmm. actually. Because we, we... Luckily, we got our feature film out before they started. Because... <laughs> <laughs> 
at first, I was actually worried these guys were might actually potentially disapprove of that. We were okay with you being in a student film. <laughs> Had you signed a, a three million dollar contract with Miramax, we would have been upset. But <laughs> <laughs> no, but I didn't sign. I, I, I didn't sign. Student film was fine. But basically, they, they told me the favorite part actually was in the pinball. Mm-hmm. But it's when they actually shot the circus school. <laughs> circus school. Hmm. You'll have to look into the circus movie, Robert, and see if it has any screenings left. The circus doc- the after circus documentary at Hot Talks. Yeah, I can check it out. <laughs> okay, I think, I think that'll end the interview. Okay, cool. <laughs> and that was my interview for Wizard Mode. Uh, the uh, film is uh, currently available f- on iTunes and other platforms, and I will include a link in the show notes so you can listen to it. And I will also include some links about Autism Awareness Day so you can read more about it and possibly make some donations. And um, that is all for today, and I will see you next time. Sean Kelly Interviews is a production of Sean Kelly on Movies and is hosted by Sean Kelly. The music is Out of the Fog from the website podsummit.com. You can support Sean Kelly and get bonus podcasts at patreon.com slash skonmovies. And you can read Sean Kelly's writing at www.skonmovies.com.